Today on MTG Unpacked, we're cracking open the new Gruul Guild Kit from Ravnica Allegiance. And with me today we have Sarkhan and Nissa to represent the colours of the deck. That is red and green. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this. And if you saw our previous video, we got into the Rakdos Guild Kit. That is actually my favourite guild, so I was very excited to get stuck into that one. So let's see what we have here with Gruul. We get a cool deck box, assembled like so. We get a Gruul sticker. And what is this? Burn, smash, fight and win! Okay, so here we have the list of cards. We have stuff from Guildpack, Gatecrash, Ravnica Allegiance, Ravnica City of Guilds, Guild Pact, Dragon's Maze even. Whole heap of different stuff there, so check that out. And on the back we have a very nice poster here. I believe that's the dude on the foil card we get as well. Alright, and we get a nice gruel coloured die. Let's see what we get there, and a pin. Let's hope I can focus this. Look at that! Focus much better than the one yesterday. We were having a whole heap of focus problems. Alright, so let's move this aside and take a look at our foil card. We have Rurikthar the Unbowed. Legendary creature, Ogre Warrior, 6-6, six, 4-6 six, six mana with Vigilance and Reach. And when he attacks, he attacks each combat if able, okay. And whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Rurikthar deals 6 damage to that player. Some very nice foiling here, I like how the guild symbol glows there. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's get stuck into the deck proper. Have a convenient little tab there. And I like to always start off with the mana base. So let's dig through here until we always see goblins. You know what that means. Anyone who has watched the channel for any length of time knows I love goblins. And we'll be doing a series about goblins soon. We'll be going goblin hunting, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so let's look at the mana base here. We have, funnily enough, some Gruul Guild Gates. So they enter the battlefield tapped. Tap them for mountains or forests, so I think we're going to get four of those. Yep, as expected. Oh, here's a new one. Gruel Turf. Enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Land you control. Okay, so you're just getting a land back. Okay, interesting. So we're probably going to get four of those. Oh, nice artwork here on the mountains. So, one, two, three, what is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight. And probably the same number of forests. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So, pretty much a similar mana base in terms of the proportions to what we had in the Rakdos deck yesterday. Alright, let's take a look at the deck here. So, they like to load these up with rares and mythics, and it appears this one may be no exception. We have Birds of Paradise. Creature Bird, 0-1 for a single forest, has flying, tap it for add one mana of any colour. This one goes way back, and I really like the artwork here. Um, what is your favourite artwork variant for this card? Let me know in the comments. Next, we have an Immolation Shaman, the creature Viashino Shaman 1 3 for 2 mana. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability, Immolation Shaman deals 1 damage to that player, and for 3 and 2 mountains, it gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains menace until end of turn. Alrighty. And next, we have a Burning Tree Shaman, a creature Centaur Shaman 3 4 for 3 mana. Whenever a player activates an ability that isn't a mana ability, Burning Tree Shaman deals 1 damage to that player. Oh, this is cool. I've never seen this before. Ulashed the Hate Seed. 
That's an interesting name. Legendary creature, Hellion Hydra, 0-0 zero, zero for 4 mana. You lashed the hate seed, enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other red creature you control, and a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other green creature you control. So for one, you can remove a plus one, plus one counter from it, and choose to either do one damage to target creature, or create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. That is pretty cool. Leave a note in the comments if you know what set that was from originally. Next, we have a Rumbling Slum. Creature Elemental 5-5 five, five for 4 mana at the beginning of your upkeep. Rumbling Slum deals 1 damage to each player. Look at that massive dude. Big rocky fellow. Lots of uh, armor there. Next, we have a Giant Solifuge. Creature Insect 4-1 for 4 mana with Trample and Haste. Has Shroud, so this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. Looks like a dirty big spider to me. And here we have Rubble Welt Raiders, creature human warrior 3-3 three, three for 4 mana. Whenever it attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each attacking creature you control. Alrighty, no mythics yet. Skargan Firebird. That is pretty cool. I bet that's a nice foil creature Phoenix 3-3 three, three for 6 mana. It has Bloodthirst 3, so if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Nice. Has Flying, and for 3 mountains, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if an opponent was dealt damage this turn. I'm liking this deck more and more with each passing card. And next we have a Rubble Hulk. Creature Elemental, Star Star for 6 mana. Okay, what's this about? Power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Has Blood Rush, one mountain forest, discard it, and target attacking creature gets plus one, or not plus one, plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control. That could do some fantastic damage. And a mythic! Yes, it's the Ravager Worm. Creature Worm, four, five, four, six mana. Has Riot, so it enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. And when it enters battlefield, choose up to one, so it either fights target creature you don't control or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. And he's having some lunch there. Not sure what that beast is. But yeah, looks pretty tasty to me. And oh, a Protean Hulk. Or I've referred, heard this guy referred to as a Protein Hulk. So if you're doing some bodybuilding, you want to eat plenty of these. Creature, Beast, 6-6 six, six for 7 mana. When it dies, search a library for any number of creature cards with total converted mana cost 6 or less and put them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. And look at that thing. That is the, one of the stranger things I've seen lately. And believe me, I've seen a lot of strange magic cards lately. Uh, next we have Borborygmos, Borborygmos, Legendary Creature Cyclops. Yes, that is one eye. Okay, had to confirm that. Six, seven, four, seven mana with Trample. Whenever Borborygmos, Borborygmos, deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. And if you know how to pronounce this, please provide a phonetic uh, pronunciation guide in the comments. Thank you very much. And a mythic Savageborn Hydra. Creature Hydra 004X, a mountain forest has double straight enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it for one. And either a mountain or forest put a plus one plus one counter on it. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. Nice to see a Hydra here. Dirty big beast. Next we have Cinder Vines, enchantment for two. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to that player. For one, and sacking it, destroy target artifact or enchantment, and it deals two damage to that permanent's controller. Okay, so that's a more recent card in the current standard. Worm Weaver Coil, Enchantment Aura, what on earth is this? For 6 mana, Enchant Green Creature, Enchanted Creature gets plus 6, plus 6, really? And for 3 forests, sack it, create a 6-6 six, six Green Worm Creature token. Nice. Okay, and here are our worms. So we have a worm, 
which on the other side is a sapling. Okay, so they're doing the double-sided thing again. So we get two, three, four, and five of those. Okay, so same thing on each side. And let's rearrange our cards like so. Next we have a Skargan Pit Skulk. Creature Human Warrior. Okay. Just one of those. Wasteland Viper. You. That is hideous. This guy has Death Touch and Blood Rush. Clan Guild Mage. Human Shaman. We get two of those. Scab Clan Mauler. Creature Human Berserker. One one for two mana. With Bloodthirst too, so two of those. Zertar Druid. Get some mana here, and whenever you tap it, it does damage. Oh, this is probably my favorite card here, at least because it has a goblin. Zertar Goblin! Creature Goblin Berserker 2-2 two, two for two mana. And I don't know what comes over me whenever I see a goblin. I have to make the most ridiculous voice you've ever heard. So this guy has Riot. Enter the battlefield with your choice of A, plus one, plus one counter, or haste. Very nice to see a goblin there. And a Burning Tree Emissary. Gore Clan Rampager. This guy looks pretty savage. Okay. Sunder Shaman. Giant Shaman. Zertar Swine. Maybe that's the pet of the Zertar Goblin. Gruel Signet, so get some mana there, we get two of those. Gruel Charm, so what's the deal with this? Choose one. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Gain control of all permanents you own. Okay, so maybe if somebody steals them from you, you can get them back. And Gruel Charm deals three damage to each creature with flying. Alrighty. Pit Fight. Bit of a epic battle going on there. Rhythm of the Wild. So this is one of the few uh, uncommons that was worth more than a buck. I think it still is. So the deal with this is enchantment for three. Creature spells you control can't be counted. And non-token creatures you control have riot. So that means I enter the battlefield with your choice of a plus one, plus one counter or haste. Flames of the Razebore. So another recent card there. Savage Twister. That's pretty cool. Like the old school artwork there. And Collision and Colossus. There we go. But we do not get any Domries here. No, you'll have to get the Planeswalker deck for a Domri or uh, pull one from Ravnica Allegiance. All right. So I think this is pretty good value. There weren't quite as many Mythics here as there were in the Rakdos one. So that was pretty surprising, but uh, overall I think it's pretty good value. Uh, these are retailing for about 20 bucks each. I paid 16 each, so it was $80 for all five. So I think that was pretty good. Let me know in the comments what you think of this deck. Are you planning to pick it up or are you uh, looking at one of the other guilds? Let me know and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering unboxings and be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. And you're going to want to stay tuned. We have three more guilds to go through. We have Simic, Orzov and Azorius. So looking forward to those. Thanks for watching and have a great day.